What is today, baby? June 3rd. Well, obviously, but... Our one-year anniversary. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today is a very, very, very special day for us. It is our mm -hmm. one year anniversary and of course we're very excited about that. Um, but you know, honestly, this has a, this is an episode that carries a tone that we wish it didn't have to carry. Right. But you know, our world is facing some pretty dark times. Our country especially mm -hmm. is facing a, a, a pretty dark times with the uh, death of George Floyd. And, um, you know, it's kind of hard to, to even celebrate as right. we probably have been planning on doing it since the first day we started dating because of everything that's going on right now. Yeah. And it's hard because we've been trying to find the right way to talk about this. I mean, even in our daily conversations, it's it's hard, you know, it's just, uh, it's very difficult because there's a lot of emotion attached to it, a lot of pain, a lot of anger, a lot of sadness. Um, but then I think that we realize there really is no true right way to talk about it. You just got to right. start, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, as we come up on this milestone, you know, it, it's our one year anniversary. Um, We've been thinking a lot, obviously, about our future together and what we want that to look like. Um, and unfortunately, there's a lot of it that we can't control, you know, because the world is going to be what the world is. Um, but I think that we kind of just want to start the dialogue of, you know, people our age that are now coming into, you know, longer term relationships, marriages, right. eventually kids. And, you know, I'm biracial, so I have a very different background than you do, mm -hmm. um, just as far as the conversations that our parents have had with us. You're a man, I'm a woman, so that already is different as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that this situation has kind of opened my eyes in particular just about, you know, kind of asking those questions like, one, what do I want to tell my kids I did during this time? You know, how am I going to make them proud? How am I going to show them the right way to handle something like this? Right. Um, and how to be an activist, how to make the world a better place and be that instead of just telling them. Um, but then, you know, there's the hard questions where it's like, how, how do I tell my five-year-old how to act in certain situations, how, how do you make them understand? At what age do you make them understand? Um, it, it's really difficult, you know, but I think that there are questions that we do need to ask. The, these times, or, or this time, I should say, like this past week and a half, past two weeks, mm -hmm. and then we just kinda, you know, like the, the coronavirus pandemic, I mean, that's not even over no. with yet. And it's just like, 2020 has been a year, and um, honestly, we've said things ain't been right since Kobe died. You no. know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but it just feels like every day something keeps happening. And then you ask yourself, well, hey, what's next? There can't be there anything can't next. Be anything and then worse. voila, we're faced with another, another tragedy, another yeah. something that we have to deal with. And it's just, it's mentally exhausting. It is. And constantly, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way where you... You, it, it takes a while to finally get the words to talk about how you feel about this, right. right? And then for me, it's when you finally do say something, whether it's to a significant other or online or whatever, um, it almost like it escapes you. It, it, it doesn't feel like those words do any justice, you know? Right. Um, and it's been a very emotional, draining, exhausting time. But I think that... At the same time, I'm also very hopeful because I am seeing a lot of people for once that aren't black outraged about what's happening. And that hasn't happened every single time that a black life has been taken. Right. Um, and so I think that I feel hopeful because it's like, okay, like maybe this is finally when people are going to educate themselves. And that includes me too, because I will admit I am not the most educated when it comes to the civil rights movement. I mean, when you think back to what is taught in schools, it's not really in depth unless you go out of your way you know what I mean? Even in college, you have to take certain courses, but they're not mandatory, you know? And mm -hmm. I, I wish I had those experiences. So now I'm doing the work, and that is okay if you are 28, 33, 
45, however old you are, it's never too late to educate yourself, especially at a time like now when you do need to arm yourself with that type of information because you, you have to know what you're fighting for and you have to know why and what has been put in place that enables this to even happen in the first place. So Jacksonville is blessed that a lot of things you've seen in other cities, you yeah. haven't really seen here. And of course, we wonder what that scene would be like, you know, um, in certain places, the protesting isn't so peaceful. Right. Um, in certain places, you've had people from organizations who have kind of come in to paint this bad picture right. about what the protesting is and what it's supposed to be doing in that city. And that's very unfortunate. But let's be real. You're always going to have people that find an opportunity, whether it be they're the ones, you know, looting and, and, yeah. and breaking in the stores. Meanwhile, you have some of the innocent ones who are on the outside saying, oh, we, listen, we not are literally yeah. trying to fight for what we believe in and make sure our voices are heard. As black journalists, and I've seen many, you know, who have been uh, using their platforms to, to do right in a time mm -hmm. like this. And it's really hard to find out what is the right thing to right. do. Uh, but I've seen many of them who have, you know, they're using their platforms to just bring awareness to what is happening because... In some cases, some people don't know that this stuff is happening. Right. You can't know what you don't know, you know, and I think that this is, you know, one of the biggest teaching moments of our time and of my lifetime. I know that um, where I think that there needs to be open dialogues and you need to be willing to listen. And I think that that is the biggest thing is first shut your mouth and listen. Just don't even, don't say, but this, but I faced this and I did, like, right. no. Right. Just listen. Listen right. to the feelings of a black friend, a black coworker. You know, listen to that and really listen to understand, not just to hear. And then educate yourself. There are so many books, there are so many documentaries right. um, that really kind of, it's eye-opening. And it's one of those things that you shudder when you watch or you, you know, you kind of shake your head. We're watching 13th on Netflix. And the entire time, I mean, we're just sick, <laughs> you know, and it's, but- it, it's, this, it's the reality. It's and, the and reality I think that's of what it. makes it, you know, um, kind of hard to just watch, honestly. This is the year of 2020. We have election seasons coming yes. up and everything like that. Do your research. Know what you're voting for. Uh, and who you're voting know for. Who you're voting for. Don't just pick names just because it's the necessarily Democratic. The, the party yeah. you're affiliated with and stuff like that. Like it's bigger than that. Yeah. You can be affiliated with a certain party and maybe like what somebody else is doing. Just make sure you get out there. And I've been seeing within you know this past week and yep. as next in week in the primaries, people are out there, yeah. and I'm talking lines in these cities where protesting is Listen, going on. You wait as long as you have to. Voter suppression is real, very, very real. Wait as long as you have to on yeah. that line. Do what you have to do. For people who are wondering why are, are some folks so quiet and everything like that, um, that's a great question. And But but I think, you know, you're gonna have people who really just don't know what to say right now, yeah. who feel, you know, feel that if I say the wrong thing, it could be worse. Everybody's gonna yeah. jump on me if I, I if I tweet the wrong thing. Everybody's coming. The next thing you know, I've gone viral for something I didn't want to go viral for. Yeah. And we're seeing that happen uh, right now. So be careful what you're putting out there as well. But at the same time, if you feel like you have a close friend, your close friend maybe doesn't know quite what to say. Yeah. Help them. Right. And help them. You know, you 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 can't necessarily give them what to say but no. don't be afraid to say look i understand you may be quiet right now because you probably don't know what to say and that's fine i'm understanding of yeah. that but let me tell you why it's so important for you to use your voice to speak up mm -hmm. i mean we're all facing it just as we've all faced the coronavirus pandemic and it's not gone yet and this isn't going to go just because people are arrested or, or convicted and everything like that you know those could be steps closer to, to maybe what the world wants to see, but it, this, is a, a this is a overhaul. marathon. <laughs> this, this is a legit yeah. marathon. Don't expect it to be over tomorrow. Don't expect it to be over in a couple of months. I mean, it's going to take some time. The fact that there have been protests across all 50 states and then you have them you know, around the world as well, if you don't realize how powerful we are as people, mm -hmm. that should tell you right there. Um, because 
behind words, behind wants and wishes and prayers and all that, it's fine and dandy, but there needs to be the work. There needs to be the action behind it. And this is what happens when we all come together for a common cause that is so important. So I, you can't even stress that enough. And don't allow people who don't believe in the same thing as you to kind of get you off of your goal. I mean, this is what it is. I mean, everybody's not going to agree. Everybody has their own opinion and you can't get upset because people don't agree with you. It's, Which is hard. It's very, it may be hard, <laughs> but you know, me and, me and Alex, we have conversations all the time and like, she'll be upset about something. I'm like, why do you care? Like, don't let because that, I care. and I get it, but don't let that get you off track of what you're going after. It's kind of yeah. like one of those things when you're running, running a race and you don't look over you, next. You, yeah, you always paying attention to what's happening in lane two and what's happening in lane four, and you're in lane three. How about I'm gonna keep my eye on that finish line, and when I get there, I don't care what y'all did, and I'm probably gonna be in first place too. Just saying. So stop but looking. I want to know if y'all cheating. Looking. Over and looking. There. That's why we got people on the outside looking. Maybe they care more about that than I do, and I'm I'm not I'm not not concerned. But stay healthy mentally. Mm -hmm. uh, take a moment away from social media sometimes because all you're seeing, you know, we went from seeing nothing but coronavirus stuff every day and seeing deaths, deaths, deaths. This person died. This person tested yeah. positive. This thing. Okay, now. George Floyd, George Floyd, George Floyd. Here is the, the video that we've seen a million times. Right. Oh, and now here are people protesting. And yeah. now here are people looting. And now here are people saying this. And now I'm mad because how dare they say something like that about this situation, whatever it may be. Take a moment, break away. If you got to take a full day, do what you got to do. If you got to take a couple minutes, yeah. do what you got to do. But just, it's, it's tough and I get it. We all need to be in the know. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I think you always need to be in the know, but don't, don't overcrowd your brain with, the unfortunate news of this world that really isn't going anywhere right yeah. now. Uh, mental health is real. Find you a therapist, seriously. And there are many resources out there um, because yeah. sometimes I think we all just need somebody to talk to. I'm thankful to have Alex that I can talk to. I'm thankful to have family that I can talk to as well. But I yeah. understand everybody doesn't have that. Mm -mm. You know, so uh, if, if you happen to be someone who doesn't have anybody to talk to, shoot, send us a message. Yeah. Um, when you subscribe, you can always send us something as well. And we would love to respond back to you. And even if you just need us to listen and you got something you want to get off your chest, don't go off on us. I know that. But um, you know, if you got something <laughs> you want to get off your chest, you can always. Because he's not paying attention anyway. Back. He's looking at the finish That's line. That's correct. So I'm don't in lane three, bother. baby. I'm in lane three and I'm headed for the finish line. <laughs> We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>